So Twitter has a new video editor and it's actually really good. So these are the top five things you need to know about Twitter's live cut. All right, now first off, you need to know where to find this thing. And a little while later from now, I'll tell you about my experience with the mobile version of this. But for right now, I'm just gonna show you the desktop way to get into the video editor on Twitter. So it's under more, creator studio, and then media studio but we're still not quite there. At this stage, you should be looking at your content library. But what we're really looking for is the next section over called producer. Well, it just so happens that I am a producer and I produce a show called Espresso Shot that is a live stream that we post to Twitter every Wednesday. All right, so we are inside of the producer section in Twitter. Now, if you notice, it says that the source is Periscope. That's because that old Periscope code is still inside of Twitter, but we're gonna use it right now in a really cool way. So I'm gonna open this up. It's gonna show me that live stream that I pushed to Twitter earlier. And now that it was pushed into Twitter from an outside source, which I'll talk about later, we can go in and edit and make a bunch of really cool clips. So I'm gonna launch the video editor now, and it's called Live Cut. This is Live Cut. This is where we're gonna do all the cool stuff in this video today. And I'm gonna show you why it's actually super dope. Now, the first thing I wanna point out is over on the right hand side, you can see these four different little clips. It says clips up at the top, and then it shows these three that say untitled, and then it says this one is called Hunt right here. And if you look, it says tweeted. It's actually keeping track of these drafts. So let me go into this really quick, and I wanna point out a couple really cool features. First off, we are able to edit after we've made the clip and fine tune it. So if you see, I've got this little green handlebar on the left and anytime I click on it and drag it around, it's going to adjust. But what if I wanna get it just perfectly, like right at the exact start of a word? Well, I can go through and I can adjust it one frame at a time. So I'm just moving it back one frame or forward one frame. And if I wanna check to see if that is exactly where I need it, I can say play from start point. And if it's not exactly where I need it, then I can just go back and adjust it a frame back or a frame forward again. And if I know that I'm a little bit off, I can even adjust it by a full second. Now this is super, super helpful when you're trying to find that exact starting point. So this fine tune clip in point and out point is a big deal. To me as an editor, it's a big deal. So let me click on the second part. This is the end here. Just the same deal. I can add a second to it. I can remove a second and I can play the last two seconds. This is so helpful. This is my favorite feature. I'm starting with the best. Uh, and there's other cool stuff that I'm gonna tell you about. This is my favorite part of all of this. I can adjust by playing the last two seconds, which I don't know why YouTube doesn't have a feature like this or other editors don't have a feature like that. I just wanna know what exactly the end of this video is gonna sound like. And a lot of times that's hard to find an ability to get that last two seconds. They gave you a button. It says play last two seconds. I love it. If you need to adjust it, add a frame, add a second, all of that stuff, just absolutely amazing feature. Okay, let's talk about the second thing. Now, the other really cool thing is after we fine tuned that, we have the ability to save this clip, to export it. So we've edited and we're exporting the edit. We're taking the little clip that we just created from Twitter and we're able to save that. Now I am able to do this on mobile as well. And again, we'll talk about that in just a bit, but I wanna say it's clunky. It's not super easy. On desktop, this is so easy. I click a button, it saves the file. Like that's how difficult it was. I made the clip, I saved the clip. I can post that to YouTube. I could post it wherever I want. It doesn't have a bunch of weird branding on it. It's clean. I was able to fine tune the clip exactly where I wanted it and now I'm able to export it and put it in a video editor, add music, whatever I wanna do. That is huge right there on its own. One little thing to bring up though, when you make changes to the edit, it takes some time. Give it a couple minutes after you've adjusted the in and the out point of that clip before you want to click download because it will be grayed out until the system has it ready for you to export. Okay, number three, tweeting. We could tweet, it's ready. We clipped it, we got it all good to go and we can come through here and we can add information. Now I've already tweeted this one, but look, it will let me tweet it again. What if I wanted to just make a tiny little change to the trim 
and then post it for a second time or tag a different person. And it keeps track of what you've done. These ones have not been tweeted. And so they don't say tweeted, but this one has. Uh, also, you'll notice that this little blue tweet icon is lit up here. It's not here. I mean, that's just the dope feature that was worth bringing up. Okay, really quick before I continue, you can do some of this stuff from a mobile device. I don't like it. It looks really clunky. Uh, I got to turn the phone sideways to be able to get everything to fit in. But I do know this, I can tweet these videos. If I have the clips already, because I put them together using desktop, I don't have to post them from desktop. I can actually do that for mobile. It's kind of weird, but it'll work. And I think that's actually super dope. You could essentially make all these video drafts using this studio that most people don't even know exists. We can also download the clips to our mobile device. Very clunky, but it does work. And we can get some of the data ready. We could put the titles in there. We can add some text, things that are very low effort you can do for these clips and kind of doctor them up a little bit, but you really cannot adjust them. You can't move the in points or the out points. It's very cramped. Um, it doesn't actually show up the right way on the screen. But if you want to get to it, just go to studio.twitter.com slash live cut. Okay, so feature number four is the ability to add a call to action. Now, interestingly enough, you can do this on mobile. You can add the call to action, put a link in there on mobile, uh, and then you can tweet it out right from mobile. The only thing is you can't see the call to action from Twitter mobile. Now I tested this out earlier. I took one of those sample clips, the one that was tweeted, and I added a call to action, which if I just click on the video itself, all that it does is play or stop it. But if I click on the little link that says visit shredditor.com, it's gonna take you to the course that I put all this stuff together as I figured it out. This is a free course. I charge you seven bucks a month if you're in there for 30 days and you don't take any action then you get charged. It's kind of like a gym that charges you if you don't work out, but if you do work out, then it's free. So for people that are trying to use the native video features of Twitter, but also drive traffic to other places, I think it's worth saying that having a call to action in a video, even though it's only on desktop, it, at least it looks pretty clean. And it's a feature that most people aren't used to seeing. So definitely something I'm gonna experiment with myself. Number five, we're able to change the thumbnail right here inside of the live cut video editor. So if you look right here, I can click a button that says change thumbnail, right? And when I open this up, it, it gives me a new option that says choose. So I can scroll to the left and right. It doesn't matter if it's in the live section that I've chosen for the clip or if it's outside of that. Uh, but let's just say this is right where I want my new thumbnail to be. All I have to do is click choose and then that will update my new thumbnail. If I click change thumbnail again, drag it over somewhere else, click choose again, it updates the thumbnail. That's particularly good for one thing. If you are sending out videos in a direct message to somebody, it doesn't autoplay the video. It's a little different if it's on your timeline because as you're scrolling through Twitter, those videos are just playing before you even see them. So you might not get the best thumbnail, but if you are gonna be sending people DMs with a video that you want them to click to play, and let's say the first frame is a completely black screen and then it fades to something that looks cool as the video gets started, then it's much better to have a thumbnail that shows that cool visual at the very first thing that they see before they click it, rather than just a black screen. So that is definitely a feature that I've been using inside of Twitter for a long time, and I'm really happy that they included it in live cut. All right, let me know if you're gonna use live cut. See you next time.